What's up everybody, this is my first test video and we'll be taking a look at some Blackmagic RAW footage from the Ursa Mini Pro using the uh, new beta mode they just came out with. I wanna try and keep this short and to the point and I'll share some of the things I learned and let you guys decide how you feel about the footage. So first off, I wanna thank my wonderful fiance for being my model for this shoot and to just jump right into it here, we're looking at the Blackmagic RAW 12 to one compression and uh, it looks great. I'm very impressed, the eight to one I mean, they, so I mean, they look really great. I'm I'm really impressed with just how clean they all are. And obviously, with these modes, you have a constant bit rate, so you're you're you know exactly how much space it's going to take up. And it, it's nice when you're do, when you're doing gigs to have a, just an idea of exactly how much space you have left and how much time you can shoot for. And then these modes, the Q5 and the Q0, again, they look great, but that that it can fluctuate a little bit. So if you're on a job that requires that, it, it's obviously great to have that option, but I, I probably won't be using it as much. So even though the, the Blackmagic RAW looks amazing, I think I'm also a little taken, taken back by just how good the 4.6K looks, because I've been shooting most stuff in UHD for a while, which obviously looks amazing coming, coming out of the Ursa Mini Pro, but just the fact that I haven't really seen the 4.6K much, because I haven't really spent much time with it, because it just hasn't been practical, I'm kind of impressed with how good like just even the ProRes LT stuff looks in the 4.6K, just because I haven't really seen that, just the pixel count being that high with their color science, I, it, I'm just very impressed with how good that looks. And just going through the final flavors of ProRes here, just the, the 444 and 444XQ are obviously amazing, but just I think that's why this Blackmagic RAW is such a big deal because it's just the file sizes from these ProRes files are enormous. And I think that's that's really the big deal here is that when you look at the file size difference, it's 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 pretty insane. Just the fact that I've been shooting in UHD and ProRes 422 HQ, and I only have about 47 minutes on on a 256 gig card, I can record in 12 to 1 for 115 minutes, which I think is just really going to change the way I can shoot now. Because I mean, I'm gonna let you guys decide, but looking at all of this footage, I think the 12 to 1 is a very practical mode, and I think a lot of people are gonna gravitate towards that just because it gives you so much, you have so much freedom and you have so much time uh, and you're still shooting raw. That's what's so crazy about this. One thing I did notice that I wasn't aware of before I did these tests that uh, some other people will probably want to know as well was that in order to shoot the Blackmagic RAW, you have to use the 4.6K mode or else it windows the sensor. I watched the video of Blackmagic CEO Grant Petty talking about what's actually happening when your camera records with this codec and he was explaining how it's using the camera's hardware to do part of that demosaic process in camera to take some of that load off of your CPU or your GPU. Asking it to use a size other than the native sensor size might just be too taxing on the camera's processor. So I'm not sure if that's the actual reason, that's just my guess as to why it's like that. Hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, if you liked it, please subscribe, like, and leave me a comment letting me know if there's some other tests you'd like to see. Thanks for watching.